The season has gone by quickly, and today, the regular season comes to an end for UTSA with their final home game of the season as they return to take on Cincinnati. We've seen the Roadrunners suffer some heartbreaking losses this year, and they added another one to the list last week. But they're back at home today, where they are 4-1 and one this year, the only loss coming against Texas earlier this season. They take on a Bearcats team who is ending their first year in the Big 12, and it hasn't been the debut they were hoping for. But they never expected their quarterback situation to play out the way it has. Last episode, we went through how they lost Desmond Ritter because he graduated, and the two quarterbacks behind him transferred. So Brandon Wilcox, the true freshman, has done his best as the starting quarterback this season, and the Bearcats are 3-8. and eight. When we have the football today, keep an eye on left end number 21, my Jay Sanders. He is their best defensive player, and our tackle play this year has been a bit shaky. And of course, every year we have to talk about the senior class playing their final game in San Antonio. There are some fantastic players that we're going to miss next season, and we'll see how they close out. Their last game in the Alamo Dome as we get underway, UTSA and Cincinnati. Thank you for all the support this season. We're almost two years into this, but it's time to get the finale underway from San Antonio. From the one, here is Marvin Stokes across the 20 and taken down at the 27-yard line. Jacoby Criswell threw three interceptions he would like to have back a week ago. 20 touchdown passes on the year to 16 picks. He will roll out here in his 12th start as a road runner. All the way out, he'll take it down the sideline for a gain of 14 yards. Once again, it's Curtis Mills getting the start at running back as Chris Wells got time and connects with Joe Wright. Nice catch made for a first down. He's been so sure-handed this year. He's taken a huge leap in his sophomore season. But now they try to set up the screen. And they were all over it. Vince Taylor loses six. Don't want to see this offense going in the wrong direction. Chriswell on second down, connects with Darren Rose. And the senior receiver has a gain of 21. Nice touch throw here from Chriswell over the underneath defender. It's a new set of downs at the Cincinnati 32. And they'll work to the left side here with Curtis Mills for a first down. Gain of 15. They found a lot of success running behind that left side. But now they work it to the right. Here's Mills with room off the toss. Inside the five and taken down after 13 more. They finally found some balance here late in the season. Now it's a fake. Chris Swell wanting to throw, trying to buy some time, and he gets sacked. That is Lawton who brings him down. Roadrunners going back to the 10. Second down, hit again, and incomplete. And Jacoby Criswell is down. He wasn't expecting this hit. Defender came through unblocked. And Criswell's going to come out of the game. This is Bob Young entering, spread out on third down. And they get to him as well for the sack. And Cincinnati comes up big to end the drive. I've been pretty critical about our run defense this year, and I think the focus has to be on stopping Jerome Ford. We do have good news, though, that Jacoby Criswell will be coming back into the game. Just had the wind knocked out. But Brandon Wilcox out of the shotgun. Three receivers, two running backs on first down. It's a give to Montgomery with running room. And a first down right away. We'll see how much the Bearcats look to run today. I think that's where they'll have the most success. This time they do get it to Jerome Ford, and he has running room. There's 11. Good start on the ground. Nice way to build some confidence. First down, now Brandon Wilcox wants to throw it deep, and the catch is made at the five-yard line. It's Trey Tucker for 46 yards. He just threw it deep against A.J. Brown, who wasn't able to react in time, and it's Cincinnati inside the five they give it to Ford and he's met nowhere to go 
third and goal. Jason Hall is the deep safety. Wilcox setting up a screen. Montgomery trying to get there, and he's hit down by Jason Hall, shy of the end zone. That was a good opening drive, though, for Cincinnati. They were aggressive, went for the big play. They got it, and we're tied at three. On the return now, watch out, it's Stokes across the 50, and they got to him. Almost broke it. Great field position regardless. Joe Wright is the motion man. Here's Chris Swell, complete. Keetron Jackson for a gain of 10. Jackson is slot right, third and three. Pressure on the way, pass caught by Curtis Mills. Down the middle of the field to the 10. A 26 yard catch and run. And the Roadrunners have it. They'll run it with Mills now to the left side and he picks up five more. Brandon Reese is in the game, Roadrunners out of the eye and this is Taylor and he picks up three. Third and short. They go with two receivers, Rose and Wright. Chriswell to throw it. Davis hauls it in. And he did not score, but they will mark it first and goal. There was that small window to get a new set of downs, and that's what they did. Here's Mills. But he's denied. Couldn't get in. Third and goal from the one-yard line. One more time. Mills is in for the touchdown. Curtis Mills closing the year strong. It's his fourth rushing touchdown of the season. And the Roadrunners lead this 10-3. Brandon Wilcox, he's taken down by Brandon Ford. There's a trio of senior linebackers playing their final home game today. Wilcox launches again. Tucker's got it down the sideline and hit out after a 58-yard catch. He's gone deep on A.J. Brown and now Reynaldo Lawrence. And Lawrence is not at his best defending the deep ball. We've learned that this season. Brandon Wilcox attacking that weakness. And it's first and ten from inside the red zone. Room for Ford. Broke a tackle. Down to the two. Bearcats won't back down here in the finale. Second down. Ford in for the touchdown. A quick answer for Cincinnati, and we're all tied up at 10. Both offenses are off to good starts today, and the Roadrunners take over. Off the play action, Chriswell just got the pass off. This is Roy keeping his balance. In the clear, he will score. Touchdown. 63 yards and a quick answer for the Roadrunners. Joe Wright has been one of the most improved players on the team this season. And he hasn't been that vertical deep ball guy. He's been just a great receiver all around. I think he's really completed his game this year. And as a junior, he could be in for a true monster campaign. It is 17 to 10. And Brandon Wilcox is back to pass. This one's behind the target and incomplete. It's third and three. Toss out to Brandon Ford. He won't get there. It's Kyle Jones. How many plays has he made for the defense this year? What a season. Roadrunner football. Left side. Mills through contact. Getting eight. I really like the way he's run the football. Rose on the right side. This is Mills carrying. Second effort and still going into the secondary. That could have been two yards and a first down, but Mills not content with that. Rips off a 17-yarder. Almost all of that after contact. Now they get it to Taylor. And that's a solid run. A real effective ground game here. Took them a while to get to this point, but... They're enjoying it now. All the way out. Taylor gets a block and he scores. A 29-yard touchdown. Great job by Joe Wright leading the way. That's another thing he does a pretty good job at. With that big frame of his, he walls off the safety. He never had a chance. 24-10. A great first half for the Roadrunner offense. 
And now trying to keep the lead intact. Wilcox got drilled but found his man. And a nice play there by Wiley, the tight end. As the Bearcats have it near midfield. Wilcox has them open again at the sideline. And they've actually thrown the ball around here pretty well. Second and 10, protected again. Wilcox intercepted! He got too greedy on that one. A.J. Brown breaks a tackle. He's across the 50 and taken down in Bearcat territory. That's the third interception for A.J. Brown. He's had chances for more, but he does lead the team in that department. I think he's had a really good year. Had that one really bad game earlier in the season, but he's been great regardless. Chris Wells rolling and throwing for right once again, gain of 12. Really feels like this offense is just on a roll right now. Jackson right to left, and Chris Wells going to buy some time, and he's got him wide open for the touchdown! It's Curtis Davis! They completely lost track of him with Chris Wells scrambling. Three defenders all have their eyes on the quarterback. Nobody accounts for the tight end. 31 to 10 here in the season finale, and we're not even to halftime yet as Wilcox is slammed down by Buster Mitchell. He's improved a lot as well. Screen, Jerome Ford on third down. He's not gonna get there, and he lost it at the end. I don't know if that's a true fumble. They will take a look. It is actually important because if that fumble goes out of bounds, I believe the clock would stop. I could be wrong about that, but the play is overturned. UTSA had to burn a timeout. It's a 21-point ball game. Chriswell going down. Pressure sent that time. It's Jack Dingle. Third and 11. A motion rose to the right side. Pressure picked up. Now Chriswell trying to buy some time. Heaves it, and Rose makes the catch. A 21-yarder. Just a perfect dime there from Jacoby Criswell. New set of downs, and he's got Jackson open again. Out of bounds in Cincinnati territory. You gotta be impressed with what they're doing offensively this week. Six in to protect. Here's Criswell for the end zone. Caught by Rose. Touchdown. And the Roadrunners are putting on a show here in the first half. It's their fifth touchdown in a row. And the Roadrunners lead it by 28. A big UTSA lead with 26 seconds to play in the first half. Here's Wilcox complete. It's a good catch and run that will stop the clock. Cincinnati would love to cut into this lead a little before halftime. Pauling makes the catch again. This time, no first down. And they'll hold on to that timeout. Trying to get one more playoff. We have two safeties at the 15-yard line. Catch made. One second left, and they do stop the clock. So they will get a field goal try. We're looking at about uh, 41, 42 yards. On the way. And off the crossbar. No good. That will take us right into halftime, and the UTSA Roadrunners are giving the fans everything they wanted to see here in the season finale. The offense has run the show to this point, and they have put up five touchdowns already. They've scored in a variety of ways, making all kinds of impressive plays. But it's the defense out first here in the second half. Cincinnati trying to regroup. This is caught. What a hit. Jerome Ford just got drilled. Third and two. Ford carries. He gets the first into the secondary. He's had a few really nice runs, but 11 for 47. We'll take that as a defense. Wilcox connects again. Will Pauling into Roadrunner territory. I've actually been pretty impressed by their passing game. They've Protected Wilcox really well and do so again as he connects with Tyler Scott. If we're not going to get pressure, most quarterbacks here at big schools will 
find a way to pick you apart. This is Pauling now for a first down. So either the coverage has to get better or we have to get more pressure. One or the other. Wilcox, oh, he tripped and went backwards a bit there. It's a loss of seven. Really throwing off the drive here and now third and 19. Wilcox letting things develop, but nothing opens up and he's sacked. It's Buster Mitchell again. And that's going to bring on the field goal team. And this time we're looking at 47 yards and it's wide right, no good. Had more distance behind this kick, but still no good. And the Roadrunners will take over. Floating for Jackson on the screen. And he'll pick up around six. Everything has really come together for the offense this week as Mills actually loses two. That was a good play. And now they're showing pressure on third down. They handle it pretty well. Chriswell up top, and Jackson's got it! He brings it down at the 11-yard line. It's a 56-yard throw. Jacoby Chriswell has had the best game of his season here today. The Roadrunners up 28 and back for more. Here's Chris Well to the end zone. Touchdown. It's Joe Wright. A nine yard touchdown this time. And Chris Well has gone over 300 yards passing with four touchdowns. And it's 45 to 10. A route here in the final game of the season. As the catch is made for 17. Wilcox swings it out to Montgomery, and there's running room. Running through defenders for some extra yardage, he gets 19. They've had some drives where they've moved really quickly. Now testing A.J. Brown, he almost picked it off. He should have. That's why he plays corner and not receiver, right? Third and five, Wilcox off the mark and incomplete. Cincinnati Techs on three. But that speaks for itself right there. And these drives, six plays or less. The big play has fueled the offense to its greatest success this year. And today, there have been so many. Rose is the motion man, and they'll run the other way. This is Taylor trying to get outside, but that was well defended. Wright and Jackson are your two receivers on third and four. Chris Whale has Alexander, and the young tight end picks up 10. I think he's been a solid addition to the starting lineup as well. Splitting time with Curtis Davis. Third down, on target again. Chris Whale is feeling it today. 14 yards to Joe Wright. This is how you want to close the regular season. Wright on the screen. Very close to the marker. They've kept him real busy today. That's seven catches. Toss out to Curtis Mills. Nice job by Reese. First down, Roadrunners. They've opened up those outside running lanes, finally. Here comes Jackson as they set up the screen the other way. This is Mills. He makes a move and gets drilled around the two-yard line. Can they score another touchdown? Third and one. Here's Taylor working outside. He is in for the touchdown. It's a three yard score and the Roadrunners have put up 50 in the finale. They've scored a few blowout victories in this building this year and this looks to be Another one as Ford will make the catch here, but now they're operating against a defense that is a lot of second string players, but also seniors. Wilcox got of the way for Pauling, and that's a first, or close to it at least. The Roadrunners went 7-5 during last year's regular season, and they're on their way to duplicating that as Thompson hauls it in for a gain of 21. Cincinnati looking for the touchdown. This is Ford, and he scores. Cincinnati's first touchdown since the first half. Down 32. They're going to attempt the onside kick. And that was bobbled, and they got it. All right, just like four more, and they're in business. 
Brandon Wilcox steps up and got it to his receiver. I don't know how Ford didn't knock that down, but he didn't. Wilcox is putting up a lot of yardage today, actually. And now he's hit down. Preston Quinn came around the edge. I'm not sure Austin Woods really did anything there, but I think he just got the credit. A design draw. A couple yards there. Fourth down now for Cincinnati. Let's see what they dial up here. The pressure's on the way, but throwing into the blitz. First down. Safety standing inside the five. Wilcox in trouble. He is sacked. And there is John Davis. To fourth and seven, Cincinnati. Wilcox back to throw. Wanting six. It is almost intercepted by Trent McGee. And the Roadrunners have won the game. 52 to 20 is your final score, and what a game this was. The Roadrunners have their best day of offense all season, and Jacoby Criswell really played his best game by far. Everything we did on offense simply worked today. And there seems to be an element in this game of being able to get a quarterback on a roll, and then there's really no slowing them down. Chriswell made plays outside the pocket consistently when he's usually a lot more inconsistent. And he just did not miss. I felt like it was the best game we've seen from him and hopefully a sign of things to come next season. Joe Wright, seven grabs, a buck 23, two scores. He goes off for the big day. And the Roadrunners get win number seven. At the same time here, Brandon Wilcox kind of got on a roll. We've seen some quarterbacks this year against us put up some games like that, but also somewhere they're just not able to get that rhythm established and they have far more inconsistent games. It's just kind of hard to throw off a quarterback who gets off to that good start is what I've kind of noticed. But what a great way for our senior class to play their last home game in San Antonio. We do have our final recruiting update of the season. KJ Hertz has chosen TCU. He was a safety that had like zone coverage I liked, but I just don't think he's like a D1 athlete is the problem. But we did get two more players in the class. Running back, Rokeem Anderson. He does have some elusiveness in his game, a good spin. Hoping he develops more as a complete running back. And then Cameron Williams. Just the quarterback I've been intrigued with. He's six foot, 245 pounds. He does run with some power and has some elusiveness in his game. And as depth, he was somebody I really wanted to get. And I'm glad it didn't take the offseason to do it. So I'm throwing our points at the last players here, but I think we have a good class already. A chance to add more. We sim to our bye week and do add one more player. And this is Rafe Wentworth. He is the top 10 linebacker. He is a four star, but again, I just don't know. Is he a D1 athlete with that speed and agility? He's probably going to have to develop more to get real playing time. But at the same time, we've lost so many linebackers or are about to. So Austin Jones from Stanford. He is your Heisman Trophy winner with around 2000 scrimmage yards, 16 touchdowns. And now the bowl game reveal we take on the Auburn Tigers in the Texas Bowl. So it's kind of a home game for us. A little bit. We'll go over to Houston. And again, we're taking on one of those middle-of-the-road SEC teams like we did last year facing Tennessee in that bowl game. That went our way. We'll see if it does again. I think that Auburn has a couple really good things going for them. The main thing is Tank Bigsby, the running back. And with the name Tank Bigsby, you bet he breaks tackles. And that's a big concern for me, given how we've defended the run. And then Bo Nix at quarterback. I think he'll be one of the better quarterbacks we'll have faced this year. He took a really nice leap in his senior season, hoping for a chance at the NFL. Owen Popo on defense. Fast, rangy, athletic linebacker who can also rush the passer. Reggie Harvey, a true freshman wide receiver. He was named an All-American and went over 1,000 yards. 
as the Tigers' number one wide receiver. I want to see A.J. Brown follow him around the field as much as possible. I think this is a great matchup for the final game of Season 2. Here is a look at the standings. The Roadrunners never made it inside the top 25 this season. We got very close. There were multiple weeks where I think we were one win away from doing it, and we never won those games to get us over the hump. But I still think it's been a pretty solid year for us. We had Jacoby Criswell in his first year, I think, have a good season. And the running game was lost for much of the year, and we found it toward the end. Defensively, I've really enjoyed the play of Kyle Jones. I would name him the defensive MVP with the way he has dominated that linebacker this season. But I also think Preston Quinn's been good, a bit streaky at times. Eric Crenshaw, actually really impressive to me. I think he's made around the same impact defensively as Quinn has. But I've really enjoyed the games this season. I think that it's some of the most fun I've had playing NCAA football 14 period and I've obviously played nearly 30 years of dynasty and this was one of the most fun but one more game to go before year two is finished thank you all for watching today's video please drop a like if you wouldn't mind those are always very helpful to the series subscribe to the channel and hit the bell for notifications and the bowl game will be coming your way later this week looking forward to it I'll see you then have a great day everybody